and snap and slap. Smack and snap and oh my god, it's hard to get. Tuck back in there. These couches are so comfortable. The dimensions online lied. It doesn't fit in our living room, which is why we have extra pieces. But I like it for our yeah, recording. Like this too. would be the perfect place to record all the time. I know. This is two girls, one ghost. Two girls, one ghost. We are your ghostesses. That's Corinne. Hello. I'm Sabrina. And okay, I teased you about this, but now we actually need to talk about it. Yeah. Okay. I feel like I can be skeptical when people do readings for me because I think it's a protection of myself. It's like, I don't want to buy in too much or believe too much. Right. But our listener, Christy, who we've talked about before and was the one who at the Nashville show. What are you looking at? Oh, there was just a man out there that was spending a little bit of time, but I realized it was just a neighbor grabbing mail. The way he moved, I was You're like, the woman is he in the okay? Window. Like, is he oh, waiting whoa. for like to get picked up? It just seemed like a random spot to gotcha. be on the road. People watching. This is a great spot to do it, actually. So Christy's the listener who at the Nashville show emailed us and was like, is Corinne pregnant? <laughs> and we yeah. spoke about Christy in episode 256 when you announced your pregnancy. Mm-hmm. We were on Campfire Stories one night and Christy messaged us on Instagram and was like, Sabrina, there's someone coming through and like has a bunch of messages for you and was super excited, wanted to share all this information Mm -hmm. with me. Christy goes on to like send me all these voice notes of my spirit guides, my ancestors, like completely nails all of this information. Like my great grandmother's name, my grandmother's name, my great great grandfather's name and Information about me, information about my family, information about my past, information about my future, information about my mom, like so many things. And basically, I'll just tell you the conversation Mm -hmm. that I had with my mom. So she was telling me that she's like, did your mom know that as a child she had gifts, like intuition and abilities? And basically, Christy was saying the summation of the message was that my spirit guides and ancestors want to help me open up. And that Christy can help me tap into my stuff, my psychic abilities. So cool. So apparently my ancestor named Angelo, and I don't know necessarily who this is. Well, um, probably on your mom's side. It is it sounds Italian. My, it is all okay. on my mom's yeah. side. So this is all on my mom's side. So Christy said she was getting the name Angelo and he is my spirit guide. That in a past life, I was Angelo's best friend named Samuel. Who died in... Sammy and Angelo. Yeah. So cute. And I apparently died in battle. Jeez. Oh, my God. In war of some kind. And Angelo, because I was his best friend in a past life, has decided to become my spirit guide in this life because of that. So I don't know... How weird for Angelo to, like, see you living... As a a lady? As a lady in, like, this modern day. Because, I don't know, dying in battle, it makes me think it was, like... At least 60, 70 years ago. Yeah. Like such a different it's a world. world. Very different world. Samuel and Sabrina. Wait, you know what's also interesting? A lot of people call me, have accidentally called me Sam. Really? My cousin's name is Samantha. And I've, mul- I, this is, the, this just came to me. Multiple people have called me Sam before. And it's a weird, like, I've always just associated. Relatives? No. Like people will be like, Samantha, right? Or like Sam, right? And I'm like, no, like Sabrina. That's weird, Sabrina. Uh, that just hit me. That's really weird. Can I start calling you Sam? No. <laughs> That's weird. That's weird. <laughs> I'm Corinne, and this is Sam. From and the this past is life. Two girls and one ghost. One ghost. <laughs> this is Sabrina and Sam, two and one. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm curious about that. But in this message, Christy was saying that my mom growing up had abilities and that she mm-hmm. used to complain. So this is where I end up talking to my mom. So she, that my mom as a kid used to complain about like body parts hurting, like her hand or her finger. And that she would tell my grandma, like, my finger really hurts. And my grandma would be like, okay, well, there's like no reason for your finger to be hurting. And then my grandpa came home, would come home and whatever ailment my mom had been talking about, my grandfather would come home and have had some type of accident at work or hurt himself at work with that exact same body part. So your mom was so connected to her dad. Right. So I called my mom on the way here and I was asking her about it. And my mom was like, I don't remember that. I don't like have memory of that specifically. She's like, my throat used to always hurt as a kid. But then she's like, but it is interesting that you bring up finger and hand because my grandfather apparently really badly hurt his finger and hand at work. Like he chopped off a piece of his finger at work. He was a chemist. 
and came home and like had to for weeks apparently like keep his hand above like oh for God. blood flow purposes. And she's like, it's weird that you brought up that specifically. Yeah. So I don't know what that means necessarily. <laughs> what else did we talk about? Uh, oh, and then Christy was just sharing all this information with me about my loved ones and that apparently in a couple of years, I'm going to write a book that becomes a big deal and that my brother is going to be having a kid at the same time that I my book is being published. What's your book about? Well, I didn't ask, but I already have like, I have books. I mean, I'm going to Europe. I'm writing a book this summer. So yeah, it also made me wonder like if the book was more of like an autobiography or if it's going to be one of your fictional pieces. I will never write an autobiography ever. Yeah, but you've talked about like investigating but that, family history, which is kind of autobiographical. Sure, but I think I've decided like because the thing that I wanted to look into, I just don't think it's safe to look into, yeah. nor do I think there would be information. So I was always thinking about writing a fictionalized version of my imagination of what would happen if I did investigate it. Is that where you're going to write this summer? No. <laughs> okay. Actually, I don't know yet. I haven't decided yet. But anyway, maybe that would put you on the timeline for like once it gets published, it would be a few years from now because well, the book publishing I process will is write long. something this summer. So, yeah. Woo, I can't wait. Some book about something coming <laughs> soon. <laughs> Pre-order now. <laughs> um, but it was really interesting just having talked to Christy about it and then being here in and staying in Marblehead and doing my Oracle readings. I very much have been tapping into the ancestry line that she was saying was communicating to mm -hmm. me that is so incredible it's just so wild because it's like I understand what you're saying about like the hesitancy because it's there's so many people that read things and you're like is that true is that not like I feel like there's a natural skepticism when it right. comes to people who can connect or say that they can connect yeah but then my god Christy's been getting everything right oh, this is the thing that she's she, like the strongest person we've we and know. this was the other thing that I think really really sealed the deal for me is yeah. when I was talking to my mom, I was reading some of the messages because Christy sent voice notes and some text. And she was like, she was basically saying the woman coming through, her name was Aurora, which is my great grandmother's name. My mom is named after her. Mm. And that Aurora is the mother of my grandma and that she left Italy when she was 19 for New York. And my mom was like, exact. My great grandmother was 19 years old, left Italy, moved to New York. 19. Like spot on. I want to talk to Christy. <laughs> I know. I want to talk to her now. I know. Do you think she can tap into everything? I don't know. Should we phone a friend? <laughs> Christy? Christy, how much do you know? How much can you get access to? Past, present, future? Did she tell you anything she about said, the future? Well, the book and my brother. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then she said that you and I are going to become even more sister-like during your pregnancy. Really? Yeah. Sister, sister. Sister. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if that's good news for Corinne. Well, I don't think I'd be in a position to copy you right now. What do you mean? To become more like alike? No, like just more sistery. Oh. Oh, yeah. Like, I was like, I'm I don't have as up much. in your biz. As much. I can barely get off the couch <laughs> right now. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to travel and explore <laughs> the world like you. No, not us becoming alike, but you and I just connecting and bonding mm. even more. Mm -hmm. And... Our well, I already text you first. I'm like, here's the new news about my nipple today. So <laughs> I feel like nipple news. <laughs> Next up on nipple news. <laughs> Good How morning. Are they? Here's How the, are they doing here's today? the newest check on nipples. Let's ask the nipples. Uh, oh, I am leaking and I am hurting. Oh, and that's nipple news. That's nipple news, baby. <laughs> Anyway, so stay tuned for my journey. I really feel like Christy is helping me connect to my ancestors. Oh my gosh. I want to know everything. I know. But does Christy do this as a career? Because if not, like my God. Christy is, a, a, I can't remember if she's a psychic medium or psychic or medium. One, I don't know which one she identifies as, but she does practice. She actually has this like whole group that they do Zooms every Thursday. <sighs> She invited us to join. I want to go. Let's go. Okay. Okay. Easy. Let's go this Thursday. Okay. But she said that she believes that she was getting messages from my family line in order to help me start my journey. Where in your journey are you? Like very beginning, did Infant. she think? Infant. And this is you like tapping in and unlocking your... I think so. Spiritual connection and potential. I think so. 
This feels right because you have been yeah. begging for signs from your ancestors. I've been ignoring them too a lot. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But I'm I'm <laughs> I'm I'm open. I'm here. It's like as soon as someone says, Oh, your ancestors are here, you're like, mm, I don't believe you. I don't believe, believe you. <laughs> I don't believe you. And then every other day you're like, just show me a sign. <laughs> I think they're like, what more do you I know. Want? So they have to send Christy with very specific, like, hey. You know, someone who was born 150 years ago at age 19. Here's what they did. Is this specific enough for you? This is what I've been asking for. <laughs> I haven't been asking for much. No, I've been asking for a lot. I am a brat. I am a, I am a brat to my spirit guides. I'm sorry. I love you. I'm listening. I'm here. Sorry, Angelo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, then, so my mom and I were trying to figure out who Angelo is because Christy said it was either a brother or like an uncle figure to my mom, but... Hmm. There's an Angelo that's still alive, so I don't think it's him, but I imagine like similar to how like my mom's named after her, after her grandmother, like there's a lot of being named after people. Yeah. Or could it be that Angelo wasn't his name when he was in the lifetime related to your mom? Angelo was his name when it was Angelo and Sam together? Oh, well, maybe. Like maybe a couple lives ago he was Angelo when you were Sam. Oh, that's interesting. I'm curious. My mom and I was looking at like our family history. So look, let's see. She just sent me, maybe it's this, Angelo. I'm not going to say the last name. Not that it necessarily gives anything away, but it probably doesn't make sense because <laughs> now she's talking to herself. Yeah, that probably doesn't. She said, maybe this. And then resp- I didn't respond. She said, maybe that doesn't probably make sense because she was born in 1912 and the oldest. So that doesn't make sense, mom. I don't know what she's saying. Anyway. My mom's trying to help me figure it out. It's a mystery. Trying to figure it out. Wow. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And oh, another thing she said, so my great grandfather, so my bees nana's husband, I never met him. His name was Giacomo. And Christy said that there was a Jack coming through. And when he moved to New York, they changed his name to Jack. Really? Or they started calling him Jack to be more Americanized. Whoa. This is so wild. I know. We need to figure out, does Christy have like a website or something for me people look. who want readings? Because I feel like this is this is like the opportunity for us to deliver. Christy is a manifestation coach, ascension coach, and healer. I'll ask for a link if there's anything specifically. So Damn. we'll ask. We'll ask. This is also just proof of how many incredibly powerful and in tune people there are in our community. I know. Like I was thinking about it the other day with like, how many people get readings? Like even on campfire stories, people will be like, oh yeah, I have like Birdie and her team of like dragons and ghosts yeah. and like familiars familiars and came and helped me with this or that. Or yeah. like, oh yeah, I talked to Jason and he did this or let the Poltero for me. And I'm like, we have so many people who just are natural at this or have tapped into it. And they, everyone like shares together in the community too. It's so great. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. I'll do a reading anytime for you. I feel like we have accidentally made a coven. Like yeah. I know there is a two girls, one ghost coven, but I, I feel like people who don't even know that they're in it, they're in a coven. <laughs> Sometimes I'm just, I'm shocked. I also feel like people utilize it more than we do and we should utilize it more. Well, I'm using, I'm in. Yeah, you're in. I bought into our own pyramid scheme. Although I feel like I make people give me readings. <laughs> we get readings a lot. Yeah, we do. Yeah. They're offered up. And then we say, oh, yes. Yes, please. Yes, yes, yes. I want. Me want. Me like. Me want. Wow. Also, this is an Encounters episode. <laughs> yes. We don't normally share stories at the top, but this was basically a ghost story. It basically was. Yes. Yeah. And I feel like we we did make a promise of 2024 was going to be a very spiritual year for us mm-hmm. and tapping into that. And I think this is my way of also holding myself accountable. Yeah. And also, I guess I'll give one really quick update. I shared on Campfire Stories weeks ago that I thought my house was mad at me because it was popping and making a lot of noises. Yeah. I've been nicer to it and I haven't heard any noises. So is that proof? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, yes. I Yeah, but but I'm like second guessing myself. I'm like, okay, well, the floors were redone. Maybe they were just like really loud and popping for those two weeks. I don't know. But now I'm being nice. Be so nice. Be nice to your nice home. Back. <laughs> I did honestly audibly yesterday thanked the Airbnb house that I'm staying in for allowing me to be a part of it and experience it and live within its walls and feel at home. And then you're also trying to be like, please let me buy you. Yeah. How, do, how do I live <laughs> how here How do I forever? purchase this home? <laughs> All right. Do you want to go first? I feel like I was just talking for eight years. Do you want to go first? Okay, sure. Let me, let me, let me wet my whistle. <laughs> 
Where does that phrase come from? I don't know, but it makes me feel like I'm a 90-year-old grandpa and I like it. I feel like you are a 90-year-old grandpa. I am. I can barely breathe, too. I'm like wheezing. This is like a sleepover. I know. Hi. Get comfy. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> We're not used to being in person, uh, clearly. Okay. This is called the Sally House. Oh, I know it. We know it. Yes, I think we've covered it, which is why I picked it. Oh, I've heard of it. I know In that. In fact, I think you might have done a whole I episode did. on it like I four did. years ago. It was in early days, yeah. And um, last week on Encounters, we had a ton of emails from M's and Emma's and Emily's. And this is also from an Emma. <laughs> so, big M huh. uh, month for us, I guess. Okay. Hi there. I was introduced to your podcast through a former coworker, and it has become one of my favorite podcasts. Eventually, it became my sister's favorite podcast as well, and she refuses to listen to any others. Pod scare. To preface a story that I have, I'm naturally pretty closed off to spirits. I'm pretty religious, and I do a lot of praying before I go anywhere that might spook me or even pause to pray throughout. However, my sister and my mom have always been much more open. My mom has stories about bad experiences with Ouija boards an apartment haunting, and my sister consistently hears noises and sees shadow figures in her bedroom. Well, her- it sounds like Emma's doing the right thing by <laughs> praying because her mom and sister are having so many more experiences. Right. Like if she didn't, she would be this. Yeah. My sister consistently hears noises and sees shadow figures in her bedroom, and her bedroom specifically has very strange energy throughout. But she just calls it her ghosty friends. My mom's theory is, in fact, that our pond is on top of an old pig farm, and she thinks bodies were thrown in there for disposal. Human or pig body? I think human. Because pigs will eat anything. Yeah. Pigs will process metal. I definitely was not a pig in a past life based on my gastro digestional no. system. No, but like you could throw a human body in there. They'll eat everything. With jewelry, and like it, none of it will be, they won't poop out. Wow. Like, it'll be gone. It'll be processed. Wow. Anyways, on to the story. <laughs> <laughs> Over spring break this year, my mom took my sister, one of her friends, and myself to Colorado for what we called a spooky girls trip. The, the main stop was the Stanley Hotel, but we were also stopping in Atkinson, Kansas to visit the Sally House as well. And let me be the first to say the Sally House scared the shit out of me. Yeah. To begin with, Atkinson was a very strange vibe for tourists. It was a Tuesday at around 11 in the morning, and there were no other cars on the streets, no one in the restaurant, etc. They don't Mm -hmm. have much to offer besides the Sally House and a university, so that might be why, but it still caught all of us off guard. Before our tour, we stopped by Walmart to pick up some games to play in our hotel room that night. (laughs) Even then, it seemed like everyone was looking at us, and they wouldn't take their eyes off of us. That might just be all in my head, though. (laughs) So, on our tour, it was at 12. It lasted an hour, and we were all super excited. It was a really pretty day, and we were all in really good moods, but as soon as we opened the door, everyone's energy dropped. I believe it. The air inside felt insanely heavy, and we powered through. They leave a radio playing for Sally because apparently she likes it, and she'll turn it on herself if they don't leave it on. (laughs) We explored the upstairs, and I was taking pictures as we went along, and eventually, we ventured back downstairs to look in the basement, although we couldn't go down, which reeked of sulfur. Not a good sign. No, it's not. My mom took a picture of the basement and later found on the live version that you can watch a shadow figure move up the screen. This is a petition for everyone who's paranormal investigating, which like, remember when we had your bachelorette in New Orleans and you and I spent like hours going through every single every live photo. photo that we took, like desperately trying yeah. to look for spirits And the in one the photo we got it in is not a live photo. No, nope. but Ghost my penis. phone automatically changed that like that was what was so was weird about that experience it was set to take yeah. live photos and we had a live photo that taken the same like second a second before yeah. and a second after yeah crazy so weird anyways we went back upstairs and i started sitting in sally's room with the toys in her room just to see if i could do anything to bother her i started playing the child's xylophone in her room <laughs> and i was pretty obnoxious what the are you doing it's just oh. so pretty it's not as pretty as i <laughs> wanted it to be I was playing pretty obnoxiously, and from downstairs, we heard the radio start to get extremely loud, like double the volume from before and much louder than my horrific xylophone playing. (laughs) She's like, stop playing the xylophone. Oh my God, (laughs) tune this out. (laughs) Suddenly, the door opened to two men, and the radio turned all the way down again. As the story goes, Sally doesn't like men. 
Mm. The best idea we could come up with was that she was warning us that men were coming up to try to protect us. Oh. In another room, we found a mini army man moved to a different angle than he was in the photo that I took, even though it had only been us upstairs. At another point in the room, we heard my sister's friend saying, ouch, and we turned around to find a new scratch on her arm that had not been there before. (gasps) At around 12.45, my mom and my sister started getting serious headaches, so we decided to leave. Almost as soon as we exited the house, their headaches went away. I'll save you all the rest of the email since this one's already long enough, but we didn't experience nearly as much at the Stanley Hotel. The Sally House seriously was one of the scariest experiences of my life. Anyway, thank y'all for making my work commutes and my trips to school so much more manageable. It seriously makes a six-hour drive to Kansas feel so short. Sending lots of love to y'all, to Leia, and to kittens. Kittens. See you on the other side, Emma. The Sally House is one of those places that I don't remember all the details from when we researched it, but I remember enough to know that it is a very, very negative house. And I feel like... It's one of those places that I feel like the negativity has been perpetuated. People don't have good experiences in that house. No. It's hard, too, when you – with any paranormal place, like, no one can control who's going in and the intentions that they're bringing in. So it is hard when there's already kind of like a negative memory and negative energy to not have more of that manifest. And I also, like, because I know that there's so many toys there, it it just makes me think of – like a bad toy story, like the Sid next door, his yeah. toys. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I definitely don't want to go to the Sally House. <laughs> it doesn't really seem to have any redeeming qualities. No. I also love them. It's like, I don't experience things. And when I do, I just try to close myself off and yet goes on this spooky girls trip and like enters all these hugely famous paranormal places. I guess that is the good way to go in. Like you want to learn about them and know about them, but you don't want to open yourself up. Because, you know, when we, even when we went to the Conjuring house or like if I go into somewhere new, I'm very much like setting intentions. Yes. Positivity. I don't want anything negative to come through. There's a lot of nervousness. Lots. I have a story from our listener, Rach. Rach. Our neighbor's ghost in his painting he gifted us before he died. (laughs) I love this. Hello, lovely ladies. First of all, I want to say I'm obsessed with the podcast. I probably shouldn't be since the paranormal activity has about tripled since I first started listening a year ago. (laughs) Uh, Oops. Whoopsie. (laughs) But since then, I've binged almost every episode and I finally am up to date. I have so many stories to share from an old flat my family and I used to live in. It ranges from my old boyfriend being physically pulled off the bed by some entity and it left marks on him. But he was haunted himself and probably brought his own ghost from his house to ours because sharing is caring. (laughs) To constant sleep paralysis. To my sister Jill being home alone and called from the other room by what firstly sounded like our older sister Jen. And then the voice slowly turned demonic in the course of one sentence. Jeez. um. This is how that interaction went as told by Jill. Jill was listening to music in our room and heard a noise. She says, hello, is anyone home? The voice says, sounding like our older sister, Jen. Yes, I'm home, Jill said. Is that Jen? Again, in Jen's voice. Yes, Jill. Yes, it's... It's Jen. (gasps) Stop! I would fucking lose my mind! The room my sister, Jill, and I used to share when we were small had a lot of dark energy and entities as other family members used to play with the Ouija board here. Oh. My family on my mother's side has a long history of witches, and I've developed some of the gifts passed down through the generations, gift of certain sight I've allowed, predicting my own future through dreams, etc. But I'm going to share a more sweet story. I also like to imagine that before Jill and Rach were born, that this bedroom was like their Ouija board room. <laughs> yeah. And then it was like, it's like oh, a pentagram all of a sudden, floor. I'm with child, need to make a nursery. I guess this is the nursery. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you've already contacted the spirit world there, and you're about to bring in a new spirit into this world, so it makes total sense to me. Great. You may have already communicated with the spirit. Exactly. Natural transition. So should we go play a Ouija board in what will be your nursery? Is that what you're saying? I think the kid's already going to come out (laughs) creepy. I don't think we need to do anything more. My house just forgave me. That's true. We don't want to ruffle any feathers. Okay, so this is a, a sweeter story. In the block of flats that we lived in, we had a very lovely old neighbor who had no family and was rather lonely. His name was Mr. Dean. 
My dad, being an electrician, would often help with any odd jobs that he needed, and as a family, we would keep him company whenever we could. The day before he passed away, he gifted us small kids with 100 rand each, which is South African currency. Now, as a seven-year-old kid in 2002, this meant money. Yeah, baby. My dad was also gifted, uh, amongst uh, other things, a painting completed by Mr. Dean himself. It was almost as if he knew this was his last day in the world. And he <gasps> passed that night very peacefully in his sleep. It's so wild to me when people have that intuition when they know. I know. That's they can really just weird. just feel it. But, but it sounds like he didn't say anything. He was just like, here, I have some things like I want to give to you. Yeah. They're just pulled to do this sort of thing, whether they know it or not. Yeah. Hmm. So this painting that Mr. Dean had given my dad was a fruit basket on a table with a candle with a plain background. This painting hung on a wall in the lounge. Many years have passed, and my eldest sister, Jen, had a daughter, my niece, Kate. At the age of two, Kate ran... What? <laughs> Literally nothing. I was just like, <laughs> should I hang a curtain rod there and put curtains over that door? Because it's creepy in the video, and it will help with sound. And it is creepy. Sorry. <laughs> it was That was my thought process, but I realized staring up into a blank corner... Into a dark blank corner. No, I was just trying to envision a curtain rod there. Okay. Apologies. No, no. <laughs> Forgiven. Good uh, little jump scare there. <laughs> okay. So at the age of two, Kate randomly started staring point blank at this painting for five full minutes. Ooh. After a while, I picked Kate up and she straight up waved to the painting and said, okay, bye-bye. As if... <laughs> She had just had a full-on conversation with Wait, it. Wait, what is the is the painting of a person or what is the painting? It's of? a a fruit basket. It's a fruit basket on a table with a candle, a plain background. So is the neighbor? Is he just like kind of hanging out in the fruit bowl or just hanging out by the painting? Yeah, I love that it's most likely him. Ah, uh, yeah, you would yeah. think. And Kate seemed like so, like okay, bye bye, all right, yeah, having a good time, positive, yeah. I asked Kate about this when she was a little bit older at an age of understanding, but she never said what she saw or felt. I don't know if she didn't remember or couldn't tell me. I don't know. I like to think it was Mr. Dean watching over us. We no longer live in that block of flats as our family grew pretty fast and we each needed more space. I still, to this day, have constant vivid dreams, or I guess I should say nightmares, about that flat. Have a lovely day and see you on the other side, Rach. I feel like, Rage, we are owed stories, the scary stories, aside for the, I guess, the demon voice. But what are your nightmares? Yeah. And what's followed you? What else happened here? I know. Will the fruit bowl live forever? <laughs> also, yeah, where is that painting now? Yeah, exactly. Who That's what that? I'm curious about. I like how my curiosity is what dark things happen. And you're like, where's this beautiful painting? Where is the neighbor? What's his name again? Mr. Rand? Mr. Dean. Mr. Dean. But I am curious. Yeah. Where's Mr. Dean? What's he up to now? Yeah. What's the fruit bowl situation? I Has just, anyone else interacted with the painting or said anything odd about it? We'll have to find out where it is. Yeah. So you could send that to us. I would Although love that. we don't deserve it. He wants to be with you. That's so true. So it wouldn't be haunted when it comes to us. Right. Because it's not like he's just haunting. I really think it's just like him trying to connect with the people who meant a lot to him when he was alive. Yeah. So you keep that painting forever. I sure hope you do. <laughs> in the now same, I'm mad at you. In the same sentence. How dare you give it to Goodwill? In the same sentence. You can send that to us. Actually, I don't want that. You keep it. Don't, don't you dare get rid of it. I feel like you just had a full conversation with someone else inside your head. My thought, my thought process just came out loud. Totally. I didn't sort through any thoughts. They just all came. It was a thought process, but the, the other side of the conversation wasn't there. Point, counterpoint. <laughs> same person. Same person. Message being, don't you dare get rid of that Some painting. people have fight club with themselves. I have debate. <laughs> And we just witnessed it. Here we go. <laughs> okay. I have a story called Mom Hears Her Son Being Ungrateful and Decides to Teach Him a Lesson from Beyond the Grave. <laughs> These are the kind of stories I want to hear. I love when how both of us do this. And when you like re-listen to it, you'll hear it. But we put so much emphasis into a like sentence. Like we act it out. Like that was a sassy way you said it. Because it was, that's how it's supposed I to know. be. But it was almost as if like you, it's your personal mm. story. <laughs> yeah. But it does feel it like it. Feels when personal. we're reading them, I feel like I'm reading it from the perspective yeah. of the listener. I wonder if anyone listens to us reading their stories and they're like, damn, they really got 
all everything of it wrong. wrong. Yeah. I'm sure so many times. Hello, Corinne and Sabrina. Let me just start off by saying that I'm a relatively new fan. I started listening to the podcast last autumn and I'm slowly making it through each episode. You both are my favorite spooky program to listen to as I get comfy to float off to dreamland each night. We love to lull you into yes. creepy nightmares. Yes. Here we are. I wanted to share one of the very few ghostly experiences that I've ever had in my short time during this simulation. <laughs> <laughs> This yep. story starts off a little dark and emotional. First, you have to understand that my mom passed away almost seven years ago in a freak car accident. Oh, jeez. My mom was my everything, and needless to say, I miss her more than I can even say in this letter. Wait, I just had a... Is this deja vu? No. I'm pretty sure in Christie's messages to me, Samuel died in, like, dr- like in a car or something, like a vehicle in war. Is that why you have so much is, anxiety is that about why dying in a car? I'm, we're going to re-listen to these after we Yeah, record. we need to. Okay. Should we light a fire tonight and listen? Yeah. Okay. okay. Oh, wait. I'm so excited. <laughs> In the fireplace. Now I have I, a fireplace. I'm supposed to research for in the next episode, but we can do that tomorrow. Back in my... At the time of my mom's death, she and I had been living together for the last handful of years in a small apartment in upstate New York. I had never lived on my own at this point, and her passing definitely flipped my world upside down. So sad. About two months after the accident, I eventually found an apartment in the same town and thus started the new chapter of my life. I was slowly getting used to navigating through a much lonelier and quieter way of life, but I had my cat Jade to keep me company in this new living space. The apartment itself was sort of L-shaped, and in the middle of the apartment, in the crook of the L-shape, there was this floating corner counter with a phone jack for a landline, the perfect spot to set up a few of my mom's things So I could see them every day and I could think of her. So that's exactly what I did. On this shelf that I had set up, I put a stained glass lamp that my mom had made, a few of her tchotchkes, and a copy of her obituary, her class ring sitting on top of the obituary. Everything had its place. I hardly ever touched it and everyone who came into my apartment knew not to mess with it. Mm -hmm. I liked to think of it as sort of like this altar for her memory. Yeah. Yeah. So one night I was talking to my sister on the phone and now the thing about my sister is she's always been very atheist. She has never believed in spirits, any sort of afterlife or anything that is supernatural or of the supernatural sort. While she and I were talking on the phone, the subject of our mom came up. She started to talk about all the things that happened to other people interpreted as being signs from my mom and that she's still around and watching. And Mm. my sister was asking me what I thought about all of this. She would describe situations to me where someone would say something to her about our mom and suddenly there would be this like cartoon swan on the TV. And we always used swans to represent our mom and other seemingly meaningful synchronicities. But she simply just couldn't bring herself to believe that this was actually a sign from our mom. Clearly she could though because she's asking what she thinks about it. Like she knows. I expressed to her how jealous I was that she was having these experiences Here I was struggling to get through each day at work only to come home to an unfamiliar and empty apartment and I hadn't seen or felt any signs from my mom whatsoever. I didn't smell her scent to waft through the air unexpectedly. She didn't come and visit me in my dreams. I didn't randomly get to see swans on the TV. Nothing. The phone conversation with my sister eventually ended about 45 minutes later. My boyfriend at the time was on his way over to my place and I had to go pick up the pizza that I had ordered for us. I left my room, I grabbed my keys, and I started heading for the door. On my way out, I stole a glance at my mom's altar, and I noticed something was amiss. Her obituary was gone. The class ring that was sitting on top of it, missing too. Holy shit. I panicked. As I mentioned before, I've hardly ever touched the things that sat on this altar. No one that ever came into my apartment had touched the things that sit on this altar. My cat at the time was too old and too fat to jump (laughs) up onto the shelf. She never made a habit of doing that in the first place. And also, there were no open windows in the apartment that night. Even if there had been, the shelf itself was positioned in such a way that if all of the windows were open, there was no feasible way for a breeze to come through that would have been able to toss both of those items off of the shelf. Right. So I called my boyfriend and I asked him if he could go grab the pizza for us because I just couldn't rest until I located the obituary and the ring. I very quickly found the obituary hiding face down under the shelf on the floor. But that still left the ring. So where could it be? 20 or so minutes later, I finally found it. And to this day, I still do not know how the actual fuck it happened. But the ring was 10 feet away underneath the love seat in the living room. I was floored. 
So was the ring. <coughs> but I'm. <Ch. laughs> I say as I'm like burping. As I'm doing you got it, but I'm with the burp. <laughs> Immediately, my mind went back to the conversation that I just had with my sister. I remember how left out that I'd felt that I hadn't seen any signs from my mom. Where here I was sitting in this apartment filled with a ton of my mom's things, furniture she had bought, a TV that she had paid for, cabinets full of food that moved from one old apartment to this one. Everything in that apartment was because of my mom. And then it clicked. This was my mom's way of saying, well, you little brat, you (laughs) wanted your sign. Here it is. Ever since that day, I'd never had a doubt in my mind that she's always nearby. Anytime I'm in the car belting out the lyrics to Sarah McLaughlin or out antique hunting with my current partner, I can feel her with me because those are the things that she loved to do too. Well, that's my story. I hope you two enjoyed it. Here's wishing you two a wonderful, spooky season. Sincerely, Tommy. I think I referred to Tommy as her earlier, so I apologize. But I 100% believe that Tommy, your mom, is watching over you. And yeah. Kind of similar to how my spirit guides are like, you ungrateful little brat. Yeah. It's like, it's also, she's like, Tommy, you believed in all this stuff. So I didn't think I had to prove it to you. Whereas like your sister, it's taking a lot of effort for me to like, yeah, be like, I'm still here with you. I assumed you knew. And also Tommy's mom using Tommy's sister is almost even more powerful because it's like, yeah, I'm targeting the one that we all know doesn't believe in any of this. Which is not only just assigned to your sister, it's also assigned to you. Right. Yeah. If you can convince the skeptic. Then everyone's going to (laughs) believe. Then then everyone's going to believe. And world peace is within. No, it's not. No. But I I do. (laughs) I just love that this is what happened. That it was like, there's just a few items on that altar. And she's like, I'm going to fuck up a few of them. Just a few of them. It's all. I'm not going to put them in the the same spot either. Yeah. Go hunt for them, Tommy. Go search for them. Which I, I'm glad that they weren't gone, gone, because Tommy's mom knew that them being out of reach or being like difficult to find beyond that evening would have been really, really hard emotionally. I have a story to end us on. Okay. It's from our listener. Let's see. Might be signed Witchy Mama. Oh, Witchy Mama. It is. It's signed Witchy Mama. I oh, love it. It's called Familiars, Bonfires, and The Man Who Lives in the Walls. <laughs> Hello. I'm not the best storyteller, but I recently started listening to your podcast and feel the need to share a little of the experiences that I have had. I am a 26-year-old mom of two very in-tune daughters who love dancing in the moonlight and pretty stones. I love this. I come from a long line of witches, and all the females in my family have gifts, including my gay brother with his own special abilities. A family affair. Family affair. Family of witches. I always say that my brother was supposed to be a girl, but that's a whole other story. Anyway. There is my great-great-grandmother who was a well witch in the Appalachian Mountains down to my grandmother who had two girls, my aunt and my mom. My aunt also had two girls and my mom had me and my brother. But now then there's me again who, of course, had two girls. It's mostly It's girls. practical magic. Yeah, it is. So anyway, here are a couple little stories that stick out the most for me. Enjoy. Starting with my familiars. From an early age of four, I can remember cats being drawn to me. I named my daughter Freya from my love of cats, and I really connect with animals deeply. I have this cat currently that I believe has been in my life since I can remember, but in different forms. The energy she gives me is the same as my cat Smokey from childhood. I'll attach pictures of both cats just to show the energy is so similar. Anyway, Flower is her name currently, and I adopted her when I had become an adult and moved out on my own. She's been with me through so much and has been a huge part of my healing journey. (laughs) When I was scheduled to have my C-section with my second daughter, Freya, I was late to the appointment because Flower showed up on my porch that morning after being missing for almost six months. I think she left so that when she came back, I knew I would be okay. Six months. Where did she go? And she came on the day that Freya was being born. Being born. It's so wild to me because I'm like, was Freya just living in the woods or did Freya, does Freya have a second family? What if Freya went to go retrieve the soul? (gasps) (gasps) Her nipples? (laughs) Check in. How the nipples now? Hard. (laughs) Wow. I was convinced I was going to die because having preeclampsia, it was a great possibility that me or my baby could have been hurt in the delivery process. Mm. 
So we go to load our bags in the car and here is this, this cat that has been missing and my heart has been aching for for months now. I dropped to my knees and scooped her up. I pet her and cried for about 20 minutes before my husband was like, hey, uh, we got to go. And I just knew in my heart she showed up to let me safely release all my pent up emotions. She really saved me just as I had saved her when I adopted her. <laughs> the next story I have is about bonfires my family would have as a child. I thought they were just a fun tradition, but now looking back, I see how ritualistic and spiritual these moments were. Every Halloween night, my papa would invite all of my family, even his ex-wife, who is the mother of my mom, to a haunted woods. We would spend weeks clearing out these woods and setting up different sections of different horror scenes for all of our friends and family to walk through. This is magic. Ah, uh, I freaking love this. Wait, so the family that... I went to daycare with that I was like very close with growing up that mm -hmm. were my parents' best friends. They live on Lake Winnipesaukee and they do the exact same thing. What if it's them? That's what I started to... Is this from New Hampshire? Doesn't say. Did you go to the Lyman's Haunted Forest? Is this the Lyman's? Hello? Last name is not Lyman, but... Okay. Different. But could be Similar related. tradition. Yeah. Or that could also be the married name. We don't know. Like this is different. Anyway. Okay. At the peak, we had almost 500 people in my papa's backyard dancing around our fire and getting spooked. <laughs> I love this. The best part was this woods was free, of course, to anyone that wanted to come celebrate the spooky season with us. And still to this day, we throw this event for our close family and friends. We have had a few incidences where the cops had to be called and with <laughs> clear rules of no alcohol and this family event be ignored. The decision was made to celebrate and invite only a few people and close to us as to provide security measure to ensure that our rules are followed. But this is a tradition that I am so proud to have come from. I love that. Yeah, that's so fun. My last story comes from when I was four years old and had my first imaginary friend. I called him the man that lived in the walls. He still follows me around to this day, and if I sleep with my closet open, I will see him standing there watching me while I sleep every time. I don't like that. So we lived in this old house as a kid that we called the greenhouse. It was in the middle of the woods in the hills of Kentucky. Okay, so not New Hampshire. Okay. And the house itself always had bad vibes to it, even without this ghost. Well, I would tell my mom about the man who lived in the walls, and she would hear me playing with a grown man constantly. But when she would go to check on me, I was alone. I have no memory of this house other than the one image, which I will bring back up later. Anyway, I would tell my mom that he hated her. And that he wanted me to come play with him forever. Okay, this is a huge twist because I was like, oh, he's playing with her and he's watching her. Like maybe it's a relative that they don't know about, but that is not okay. She had the house cleansed and blessed time and time again, but always this thing would come back. One time when she was pregnant with my brother, she was walking up the stairs, which was odd for her because the upstairs had gotten so bad, no one was allowed up there. Does that mean spiritually so bad? She said she got to the top stairs tried to open the locked door, which never had a lock on it in the first place, but for some reason was stuck. She said she could Ugh. feel two strong hands push her on her belly, and she went flying down the stairs. She instantly went into labor, and my brother was born with the cord wrapped around his neck three times from how hard she fell. Wait, was it from how hard she fell, or was it that he would have died from the oh. cord, umbilical cord being wrapped around his neck. And so she needed to be able to go to the hospital immediately and get checked for his life to be saved. I like that interpretation better, but it sounds like it was a really negative entity. And the doctor said from the fall that that's what happened. Oh, shoot. Thankfully, by the grace of God, he was able to be saved and suffered no damage. But we truly moved out of that house the next day. Good. We never packed our things, never walked back into that house. The only memory I have is my papa picking me and my older brother up after my mom had been rushed to the hospital. And when I looked back up at the house, I saw the man who lived in the walls standing in the upstairs window, smiling at me. Ew. I waved at him since for me, he was my friend. And my papa yelled at me to get in the car quickly. After we moved out, a older couple moved in for a couple years. And my mom said that whatever was in the house eventually became so evil that it couldn't be stopped because one night the house burnt to the ground while this couple slept peacefully. They were unfortunately unable to make it out of the house and the house collapsed after that from the fire. Thank you for reading this. I would love to hear it on an episode one day. See you on the other side. Love, witchy mama. And we have pictures of flower and smoky. Oh my God, those beautiful eyes. Wow. 
I love little cat's mouths. I know. They're so cute. I just want to kiss them. Oh, my gosh. I don't even know what There's to a lot. make of this. This is so... That house. This whole time I was rooting for the man to like have a comeback and not be so evil. But like he was trying to take people's lives left and right. He was trying to take our witchy spooky mama forever yeah. with him. He almost killed her mom and her brother. And then he did kill two people. Well, I'm also so curious because our witchy mom mama said she can still see this spirit, this man in the walls, if she sleeps with her closet door open. Right. So he's followed her. For what purpose? To what extent? Did he exist in both places? Or when the house burnt down, was it his way of like finally being released from the house so that he could be with her? Yeah. Yeah. Was there a period of time where she didn't see him at all? And was does that perfectly match with moving out of the house to the house being burned down? And do her daughters see him? This feels so paranormal activity or like insidious. Ow. What was that? Are you okay? I don't know. It felt like someone poked the shit out of me just now. Ow. Did it make a popping sound too? Not that I don't think I noticed. You just felt it. like you were poked? Really hard. Ow. It's, it's like sore. Leave me be. Say it nicely though. No. <laughs> okay. This is my house. Don't poke me. Do not poke me. Okay. That was weird. Okay. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> what um, the hell? Well, now that it's getting dark, I'm getting scared. Me too. Not really. I'm getting angry, actually. <laughs> but angry at like, like a protective, like... Mama. A witchy mama. I better not be poked this again. my house. This position actually feels really nice. I've sat in that position too. It does feel it's good. It's very comfortable. Yeah. Like twisting the back yeah. of your spine. Like letting everything just... Wow. Settle the weight, the gravity of your body. Just take me away. This is kind of like the T-spine rotation. Yeah. We're going to go T-spine rotate and sip some tea by the fire and listen to the messages from Christy. Perfect. And while we do that, you all should send us an email about your ghost stories and your hauntings that you've experienced. Send them to our email, twogirlsoneghostpodcast at gmail.com. I feel so unprofessional sitting like that. <laughs> it was, no, I was just about to take a picture of you from that angle because it literally looked like a paint me. It didn't look like it on camera, but from my angle, it very much felt like a paint me like one of your French girls. Samuel. Take a picture. Sam's coming through. Samuel's being a little slut. <laughs> Poke her, not me. Poke me in the... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you can email us at two girls one ghost podcast at gmail.com. It was Samuel. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> you can rate and review us wherever you listen on iTunes, Spotify, wherever, and join the pyramid scheme. The pyramid scheme is a multi level thing where you have to tell two people to listen to us and join our community. And our community exists all over social platforms, it exists on Discord, Patreon. It exists within the heart, too. It does. And if you haven't checked out our Patreon, we now have one, just one tier. So everyone gets access to everything on Patreon. It's $5 a month. Mm -hmm. You get one extra full-length episode every single month. We have weekly campfire stories where we bring people on stage with us live to tell their ghost stories. Mm -hmm. And we have every single episode come out a full week early and ad-free. Plus a bunch of other stuff. So much fun. But those are some highlights. Yeah. Thank you to all of you for joining us. Thank you to our editor and producer, Jamie, for editing the audio and video of our podcast. And we love you all so much. And we will see, see you, you on the other side. side.